game is sponsored by Chevrolet, the cars and trucks more people depend on. John Deere, nothing runs like a deer. And by Right Guard Sports Stick, anything less would be uncivilized. 32, Malcolm Mackey. It is a true field of dreams in a wide open Midwest regional here in Kansas City. Two upset victors square off in the first semifinal. The Yellow Jackets at Georgia Tech against the Tigers at Memphis State here at the Kemper Arena. Coming up later, it'll be UTEP against Cincinnati. But right now, Memphis State and Georgia Tech. Tech played the most exciting game of the second round, winning with eight tenths of a second on James Forrest's shot to beat USC. Under the basket, under the basket. Up, Forrest shot. the man who has resurrected that old term holy mackerel Al McGuire Al that was the most exciting game of the tournament we hope to have another one tonight Georgia Tech against Memphis State they knocked off tough opponents how do you see tonight's matchup well for Georgia Tech to win they've got to contain Penny Hardaway and David Bourne they must stop them they also must keep them off the offensive board the whole team in addition to that they must stop Memphis State's transition game now Dick for Memphis State to win they got to have an up-tempo game. They got to uh, turn over Georgia Tech inside their defensive pressures. But most of all, they got to play in the face of John Barry in touchdown land. He was murder against USC with all those threes. But you're right about Memphis State. David Vaughn could be a big man inside for the Tigers. And for more on that, let's go to the third member of our team, Jim Gray. Jim? Well, Dick, David Vaughn III was the holy macro man for Memphis State. It was his game-winning shot which allowed them to advance to the Sweet 16 when they defeated Arkansas. Now I'm joined this evening by David Vaughn Sr. He is the grandfather of David Vaughn and raised him. He is a custodian for the state legislature back in Tennessee. And the governor of Tennessee has seen fit to send him here on an all expenses paid trip. Now you have 37 grandchildren, none more important than David. This has got to be quite a thrill for you tonight. Yes, it most certainly is. I'm so grateful to be here tonight. I'm grateful and I thank the Lord for that. Well, we know that it's a big, big thrill for you. You've been named Special Ambassador to the state of Tennessee. Good luck to you and good luck to David. Dick? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, Jim, thank you very much. For Georgia Tech, Malcolm Mackey, James Forrest, and Matt Geiger up front, Travis Best and John Barry in the backcourt. Penny Hardaway, he's one to watch with David Vaughn and Anthony Douglas at the forwards. Tony Madlock, Billy Smith, the guards. Working tonight's game, the three officials. Jim Burr from Albany, New York, Bob Garibaldi from Stockton, California, and Stan Reynolds of Denver, Colorado. Well, here's how these teams got here. Georgia Tech knocked off Houston, and then, of course, the dramatic three-point basket against USC. Memphis State, after beating Pepperdine, defeated Arkansas for the second time this season. Larry Finch in the sixth season, and he has played in the Final Four back in 1973, and Bobby Kremens. In his 11th season, the coach of Georgia Tech, George Raveling sent him some flowers of congratulations after the game. That was a nice gesture. Right? I like George's statement after the game. He said, that's the way God wanted the game to end. Hey, before we get Memphis State in trouble and the governor of Tennessee, the governor of Tennessee paid for that trip out of his private bank account, not out of the state bank account. All right. Georgia Tech controls there in the dark uniform. First shot of the game by James Forrest. Misses, and here comes Memphis State. Their roster virtually entirely made up of Memphis State residents. And Penning Hardaway hits a three to start it. Fantastic. Looking inside to Malcolm Mackey. He's double teamed, and it's three to two. Douglas cannot play complete behind Malcolm Mackey. Mackey will have a field day. Both teams start out man to man. Memphis State is the deeper team. They get it in low now to Anthony Douglas off the glass. Georgia Tech goes seven or eight at the maximum. They don't have the depth that Memphis State has. Travis Best misses the arc shot. Hard away the rebound. And it's cleared inside by Forrest. Oh, 
Best penetrating, has it rejected by David Vaughn. And here's a two-on-one break, Billy Smith. It's coming back, Billy, don't even worry about it. When you give the ball to Hardaway, it's coming back. It's like giving the ball to Larry Bird or to Magic Johnson. It's coming back to you. Crowd is predominantly Memphis State and a full house here at Kemper Arena. Many people disappointed that Kansas didn't advance to the regional semifinals, but there are fans at every seat. Geiger tried to get it inside. He does to Mackey. Georgia Tech obviously wants the officials to let him play because they go seven or eight deep, and that's it. Well, let him play in any sort of physicalness, but let him go on, which is okay. No harm, no foul. I've heard that before. Well, if you get an advantage on a turnover from playing rough, then it should be called. It is still Memphis State's ball. There's good hands down here from behind. Uh, Vaughn goes up and catches it. No, Hardaway, Vaughn caught a piece of it. Now, here's where the numbers are right coming down. Given to the uh, one of the offensive weapons, Billy Smith. Vaughn scored from Memphis State. To open up a nine to do lead. Less than three minutes gone by. Georgia Tech has hit only one basket. This might force Georgia Tech into a zone. Tech wants to keep not so much the score low, but the tempo down a bit. Here's John Barry forcing it, or not forcing it, really, into Geiger. Memphis State doing a good job defensively inside. Here's Hardaway for three. Tech is one for six from the field, and here's Barry. It'll drop for him. Got himself a crier. He's their leading scorer, averaging 17 a game, and has been the top scorer in each of the first two tournament games for Georgia Tech. Must score from the outside, loosen up the inside. We have a pushing foul. Called against Georgia Tech, and it may be on James Forrest, one of two freshmen in the starting lineup. I think they're now going to the zone. It's a 2-3 zone. Might just be for the out-of-bounds play. We'll, we'll check on it. No, they're staying in it. They're staying in the 2-3. Is the pace too quick for Georgia Tech? Yes, much too quick. This is what the Tigers want, the transition game up and down. Get Hardaway out there in uncharted waters. And the bad pass by Vaughn over Douglas's head, and Georgia Tech coming down, down by five points. And they turn it over at the other end. Beautiful strip that time by Billy Smith. Good job, son. And he's not the defensive specialist of the two Smith guards that alternate. Yeah, Mr. Eel coming later. You go right on, Barry. That must be Ernest. Right. Here is Hardaway going strong to the basket and will go to the line to shoot a pair. You know, I, I, I hate to blow smoke wings so early in the game, but this Penny Hardaway, whatever is needed in the basketball player is inside that body, whatever it is. What a terrific gift he has in court awareness and for a sophomore, but really a freshman because he didn't play last year. You know, I was talking to his um, AAU coach in, um, in the lobby this afternoon, and he said he's never even heard a, a naughty word out of his mouth in all these years. Um, let's just hope that he hits the books and stays academically eligible. You know, a ball player with all this talent has to have talent for other things. And, and I, I often thought if I would take a road scholar into a gym in a year, I could make him something of a basketball player. So you can't be a one-way guy. Well, I'm saying, why can't the faculty take a basketball player into a classroom and make them a scholar? Geiger committed the foul for Georgia Tech. Good hands that time by Vaughn. Got a piece of it. And the four, Memphis State. In the lead, they've led all the way. And here is Billy Smith. He misses a three from the corner, and the rebound by Malcolm Mackey. If Billy Smith has a fault or has an Achilles heel, he shoots too much, but that's his game. Go nope. out of the slump in the first two games. Here is John Barry. He's short with that. And the fight for the loose ball. It's last touch by Barry. I hope he's all right on the bottom there. Good no done. call that time. Timeout. Here's intense play here. Off this rebound, watch Smith get the inside position. 
Barry comes from the outside, no foul, good call by the ref who is Garibaldi. And there's our guy in the position he'll be on at least 10, 12 times on the floor. They're letting him play, that's for sure. Barry has Geiger inside, and wide open is Travis Best. That was a two-point attempt. So with a six-point lead, here comes Madlock and Memphis State. Hardaway. Out of bounds, and it'll be Memphis State's ball. Memphis State Tigers have been to the Final Four twice. Lost to UCLA in the finals in 73 when Larry Finch was a player and to Villanova in the semifinals in 85 and that tremendous upset win by Villanova Georgetown. That's a zone you're looking at. It'll favor Hardaway wherever he goes. A little bit late coming out Nike that time. This is the three. Forrest gets the rebound and here's Best. Six point deficit and a great pass to Mackey inside and he draws the foul. And that'll be against Vaughn, his first personal foul. Now, here's if they form in their lines going in the fast break a quick kick over to the side underneath he should have been able to follow through but when David Vaughn goes up he came down and stopped the three-point play that was almost an intentional foul put the guy in the foul line Mackey to make calls if he can quick pass by Barry made it happen and Mackey although he was not the hero against USC Al graced the cover of Sports Illustrated this week that's supposed to mean a little bad luck isn't it for the team, if not the guy. <laughs> Only starter left from the final four of two years ago, hits both free throws. And in that semifinals, when they lost to UNLV, they were leading by eight points in halftime. Madlock can't get in against Malcolm Mackey. Now Barry picks him up. New face again, back to man to man. Hardaway goes in. Slam dunk in his back pocket and missed it. And now a three on two. Best penetrating and a great scoop play by Travis Best. Only Travis, a freshman. Travis gave a little pump fake. He needs that for confidence. Tough position on this young man coming in behind Kenny Anderson. Billy Smith on a fake around Forrest. Mackey has it and Georgia Tech with a chance to tie the game. Once you set up the half-court offense, Memphis State has to readjust. There goes Forrest in nice hand. Rejected by David Vaughn, and that is the third block shot by David Vaughn already. And we've completed just a little more than five minutes. He's short on the shot at the other end. Forrest, part of that 750-pound baseline for Georgia Tech, brings it down. Best with a blind pass. Georgia Tech still has got it. And here's Barry for three. And Georgia Tech has its first lead of the night. John Barry, who was six for nine from three-point range against the Trojans in round two. Got to be careful right now. The Tigers should move in that other Smith kid to get on John Barry. And the pace is still up, and Georgia Tech is doing well with the faster pace. Good feed inside of Douglas. It's Memphis State by one. Georgia Tech had run off seven in a row before that basket. That, pass, that shot's blocked by Hardaway, and it's still Georgia Tech's ball. And our first substitutions of the game coming in now, Brian Hill and Ivano Newbill come in for Georgia Tech and Ernest Smith for Memphis State. you got to remember now, Penny Hardaway is six foot seven. He gets off the floor so quick, shows no emotion, doesn't tighten up, which keeps him fluid through the whole game. And the other thing people don't realize is that David Bourne, the freshman, is six foot nine. Bill with the ball, he and New Bill in the game. First substitutions. New Bill won't shoot, he's playing down low. He's going to shoot, will be off an offensive rebound. John Barry over Ernest Smith. Ernest Smith is the best defensive player on Memphis State. Well, I think he come in, Dick. He caught a piece of that last shot. This should be good. Travis Best misses a three. Barry gets the offensive rebound. Boy, are they scrapping and fighting inside tonight. And there goes Barry down for the third time, and we're only eight minutes into the game. Barry has seven points. Georgia Tech up by one. And imagine recruiting Barry with a phone call. No visit. Didn't even see him play. David Vaughn with a missed shot and the rebound. 
Taken down by Newbill. Brian Hill. And the foul as well against Douglas. Scramble around here. Barry keeps alive. His body is so active. He's so intense. Then he gives a fingertip roll and goes down for the third count. And does a backflip. We're into gymnastics right now. <laughs> the parallel bars. Well, he's getting ready for the Summer Olympics in 1996 in Atlanta. Kelvin Allen is checked in for Memphis State. That last foul was against Douglas, his first personal. And here is Brian Hill, who has not been a good free throw shooter, but hits the basket for a three-point play. Shaking his head is Larry Finch, and for good reason. Kemper Arena in Kansas City. Dick Stockton and Al McGuire. Anthony Hardaway passes into Douglas. Didn't have control at first and scores for the Tigers. I think that's six points for Douglas. Plus they turned over pressure up court. Smith gets the basket and all of a sudden. To keep the pressure on. You got to put a man in the middle to release the pressure here. Get it over in 10 seconds. They're like Piranhas now. That's broken. And John Barry beats it with a two-point basket, but nine points in the game for John Barry. Georgia Tech had a 12-2 run going before Memphis State's defense clamped down and tied the game. But now it's Georgia Tech by two, and Marcus Nolan, a freshman, and Southpaw in the game in the backcourt for the white-shirted Tigers. They're in a 1-3-1 with the wings favoring Hardaway. Douglas ties the score once again. Wow. Douglas is four for four and eight points thus far. Nice move. He put his hip. Travis Best moved his hip in nice that time to pick up the foul. He once scored 81 points in high school in Springfield. And on the road, Georgia Tech likes their freshmen to give speeches. So he had nothing to talk about. He talked about his 81 points, and now he's been needled by the rest of his team. How to make friends and influence people. Here's a freshman stands up on the road at pre-game dinner and starts talking about the 81 points. But, you know, he's such an innocent, nice kid. He's out of Springfield, and uh, he figured I'd better talk about the 81 points. He's two shots. A lot to talk about. Kelvin Allen committing the foul, and you saw Billy Smith come back in the game for Memphis State. Best is the best free throw shooter on Georgia Tech, but he misses the first. There was lack of concentration that time. That ball was off center. It was put up very poorly. point lead now is James Forrest a three-point basket to beat USC by the way only his first three-point success of the season couldn't come at a better time and what happened they, they took the same shot at practice you know what he got an air ball <laughs> better in practice right <laughs> at Alexander Driller Dome down on the campus at Georgia Tech they had him take from exactly the same spot hit nothing but air Ooh, nice hands that time by Hill Still Memphis State ball, which only proves that Lightning does not strike twice. Matt Geiger reports back in the game, and Mackey sits down. Leading score for Georgia Tech is Barry with nine, and Douglas, who's perfect from the field, has eight to top the Tigers. All of the four baskets by Anthony Douglas are within three feet of the rim. And we'll have a foul, Geiger with a second personal foul. The last thing that Bobby Cremens needs is for Matt Geiger to get into foul trouble, and he's picked up two, and he may come right out again. Malcolm Mackey will replace him. Yeah, he'll take him right out. What you try to do in the first half is save a person after two fouls, and the second half you save him after three. After a ball play, he gets four fouls. Don't save him because he starts pussyfooting around on defense. He knows he has four. He doesn't want to go to Pine City. After four, let him play. Forrest cuts off the baseline, but Billy Smith hits from the corner. His second field goal of the game. Is that pressure again up court? Georgia Tech got the man in the middle, Mackey. That should break it. Barry slices past, and it's off his foot, and it's Memphis State's ball. He tried to go through the defense, sandwiched 
So on the turnover, the Tigers get it back. You know, despite their two wins, Georgia Tech had a lot of turnovers in their first two games of the tournament. A lot of hustle here, but loses control of the ball right there, off his foot, goes for his fourth dive of the first half. He likes this new floor. Yep, this is a new floor. The first time it was used in the Big 8 tournament this year. Off the fingers of Kelvin Allen, and John Barry brings it back for Georgia Tech. A no-look pass couldn't be handled by James Forrest. Four on one now for Memphis State, and Allen commits the offensive foul. Four on one, Al. Can you believe it? Well, when four men break, one should pull up. One man should always pull up. You got a two crowd. It's too many men crowded in here. Barry's giving ground. Holes, Allen couldn't get out of the way. Brian Hill and Travis Best give John Barry a rest for the first time. He goes out with nine points. And five times from the floor. We didn't count that last one. That'll be a new statistic in this game. Floor burn. Newville loses the ball. Ernest Smith. Don't blame that on Newville. You should not pass the ball to Newville in the backcourt. Memphis State by one, and Ernest Smith gives them a three-point lead. Forrest goes the distance and scores to tie the game for Georgia Tech. They're trailing by one, 22 to 21. This is a lot quicker pace than we anticipate. Douglas is tired from Memphis State. See how slow he's not even down court yet. It should take him out. Anthony Douglas, he's breathing heavy. Billy Smith committing his first foul. Second first foul. David Vaughn will come back in for Memphis State, and Fred Vincent checks in. He's a three-point specialist for Georgia Tech. We're all down around the eighth, ninth man there, trying to save these bodies for the second half. It's been very physical, up and down, ping-pong match, foot race, should favor Memphis State. At this pace it would, and with Geiger on the bench with two personals. Morris, they broke that trap beautifully. Nice pass by Hill, one giant step by Forrest. Georgia Tech had the lead, and they lose it again as Ernest Smith follows the missed shot. They're going to meet Georgia Tech without a deep bench work to bring the ball up here. Every time, put pressure on you. Then they adjust to man-to-man -to -man after you come over. Now they're in their man-to-man. So one, two, one, one. Pressure up court. Overplaying was the freshman Marcus Nolan. It's still Georgia Tech ball with plenty of time on the shot clock. Nolan's very quick on defense. They'll put him on Travis Best. They're adjusting right there, and Smith's coming out on Vincent. Georgia Tech, of all five starters in double figures, very balanced offense, and that's worked for them in the first two games of this championship. Shot clock getting down to 10. All right, isolate Forrest on Anthony Douglas when taking the school. Hill is trying to work one-on-one, -on -one, and we'll have a foul inside. A little bit too much hands on Ernie that time. Mr. E, he's excellent at defense. First personal foul for Ernest Smith. And the 16 foul against the Tigers. Yo, Sinbad here with the black top shoe. I got my boys here from the International Committee. I got Schwinn and Schwinn. I'm trying to get the outside game of the summer game champ Barcelona, all right? Tell me you don't love this game. Look at this game. Come on, give my man a monster slam. Oh, man, you know play 60. You got it? Give me three by black top shoe. I mean, you can't beat this. This is made for the outdoor game. How do you pick the team, though? How do you pick your teams? You call games. I got games. No, no. I got games. I got games. No, I got games. No, you will never get a game. So, we definitely going to Barcelona this summer? Is that too much to ask for? Am I asking too much here? You can ski a live volcano, take a dip in the Colorado, take your bike way up in the blue, get your tidal wave and go, you can fight without the snow, but you've never done nothing like a diet. Full tilt taste, you won't believe it's a diet. You can leap, you can fly, take a ride in the sky, but you've never done nothing like a diet. Welcome to McDonald's. May I take your order? 
What's cooking? Well, sir, the Wild West has returned to McDonald's. Oh, you don't say. Uh-huh, so you could start the day with a hearty combination of tomatoes, peppers, and sausage in our 99-cent breakfast burrito. Oh, no. And stop back later for tender strips of grilled chicken with fresh tomatoes and cheese in our 99-cent chicken fajitas. Come on, wishbone. Pull your horses. I'm still talking to the sign. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. Maybe your first car shouldn't be a car. I was 18, didn't have a care. Working for peanuts, not a dime to spare. Get this Chevy S10 EL pickup with cash back for around $8,000. Chevrolet, the trucks you can depend on, the trucks that last. See the world television debut of Hammer's new video. Get a peek at the concert tour of the year and an exclusive backstage look at Hammer from the Heart, April 3rd on CBS. Welcome back to Kansas City. I'm Jim Gray. Memphis State leads by one with 7.54 left here in the first half. I'm joined by Cincinnati head coach Bob Huggins. He plays in the second half of this doubleheader against UTEP. What about UTEP and their tough defense? It's not going to be a game like this. It certainly won't be up and down. They're, they're a great defensive team. They've got two inside guys that really protect the basket well. Great quickness with their guards, and we're going to have our hands full. Now, you've played Memphis State three times. It's got to be tough for you to scout right now, but how do you see this game finishing? Well, it's just it's been an up-and-down game, and I think both teams have missed some opportunities kind of trying to maybe fill each other out a little bit. A lot of big bodies in there banging. I think it's going to go down to the wire. All right, Bob, good luck. Don Haskins across the way scouting for UTEP also. Let's go back to Dick Stockton. All right, Jim Penny Hardaway misses a three. Fred Vinson chalked up a personal foul for Georgia Tech. Ooh, Best what? with some great magical work inside. That's the second time he's made it happen like that. Wow, that was a magic move. Hit the word right in the head that time, Dick. Here's Penny Hardaway. Hardaway so far has scored four points from Memphis State, trailing Georgia Tech by one. Vaughn is right up over him. There it is. Told you. David Vaughn. We have had eight lead changes in this first half and about seven minutes remaining now. Memphis State shooting over 50%. Georgia Tech barely over 40. Can't leave Barry open for the threes. He misses that one, but Georgia Tech gets it back. Got the ball in the quarterback's hands. He'll distribute it. Bounce the court. Tigers in a man-to-man -man all game long. Here's Barry off the screen. Misses a three and the rebound by David Vaughn. He's the leading board man for Memphis State at nearly nine a game. And wide open in the corner missing is Ernest Smith. And a foul called against Memphis State, I believe. Excuse me, I think it was against Georgia, Georgia Tech. Tech and well, it might have been on Forrest that time. Correct. And it is against Mackey. Mackey, his first personal foul. Matt Geiger, who has been hit with two personals, has come back in the game replacing Fred Vincent. In the game for Georgia Tech, Brian Hill, number 52, Matt Geiger. Bobby Kremens. Got to the final four, and it was an unlikely possibility just three weeks ago. This team had lost seven to nine in the ACC. David Vaughn off the glass. Memphis State leading by three. Good move that time, right into the man that Geiger was covering, try to pick up the third person, get him out of there. Make sure he doesn't pick up that third foul. Travis Best and the rebound by David Vaughn. That's his third rebound. We got a hot game here in Kansas City, guys, in an anonymous regional. The top three seeds are out of here, as you know, and Memphis State and Georgia Tech are battling. With Memphis State leading by three, 28-25, and five and a half minutes to go. Al McGuire, this has been an end-to-end -end game that we didn't really expect Georgia Tech to play. The pace favors Memphis State. They've got to slow it down a little bit at the present time. David Vaughn and Hardaway are playing outstanding offensive games. Outstanding. UTEP and Cincinnati are in the second half of this Field of Dreams doubleheader. One of these teams will go to the Final Four. 
Matt Geiger is playing with two personal fouls for Georgia Tech. Leading score for Memphis State, Douglas with eight. John Barry has nine to top the Yellow Jackets. Hardaway goes around Barry and will go to the line. One of the better young players in the country, Anthony Hardaway. His nickname is Penny, just a sophomore, and leads him in so many categories. Plus, what a quick step, first one. Unbelievable. Then he tried to dunk it in that time over Mackey and uh, picked up the foul. What kind of a passer and whose class do you think Hardaway can be? Uh, he is such a good passer that he has to stop passing because he was creating too many turnovers on this club. And this club only became good about a month ago when the upperclassmen finally accepted, this is a Proposition 48, but finally accepted Hardaway and, um, and Doug, and David, I mean. David, David Vaughn, Vaughn, who yeah. got the winning basket against Arkansas. Once they accepted those two ball players, then they became a tournament team. Hardaway has four assists, by the way. Memphis State shooting over 50%. He makes both free throws, and the Tigers lead by five. They had the early lead, and then Georgia Tech went on a 12-2 run to lead by four, but Memphis State is stormed back. <laughs> They'll trap a season from over half court. There was the trap. Madlock reached in. That will put John Barry on the foul line. As soon, as you, turn, soon as you turn your head, watch. As soon as he turns his head here, there he comes. But he reaches in, catches him with his leg, and he That's goes to the foul line for one and one. 17 foul against Memphis State. John Barry leads Georgia Tech in scoring, three-point shooting, assists and steals. And a 69% free throw shooter. For Memphis State to win, they must play in Barry's face, especially in three-point land, touchdown land. That's what USC failed to do in the second round in Milwaukee. Georgia Tech, the least expected survivor of the ACC to get to the Sweet 16, battling Memphis State and trailing by three with under five minutes remaining in the first half. The matchup zone favoring Hardaway, wherever he goes. There goes McKay out on him. Hardaway has the ball now. Come around the horn. How would you like to recruit in that Memphis area? Oh, I think, I think they have nine out of their 12 ball players are from the city of Memphis. They play together in the summers. They play together in high school before that. Hardaway, good defensive play by James Forrest. And here is Barry. Georgia Tech has some numbers. And here is Beth, the freshman from Springfield. The basket is good. And a foul. Let's show you this if we can. Travis Best shows the ball on the right side, makes you commit, and then comes in the back door on the left side. Only God can teach this, not a coach. Watch this. Now show the ball. There he shows it, brings it back, double pumps it, and puts it in the back door. Tim Duncan committing the personal foul. And here is Travis Best. He'll never forget his 81 points in high school at Springfield, Massachusetts, and he makes sure the rest of the team doesn't forget him. <laughs> State, and for Memphis State, Billy, Billy Smith will replace Ernest Smith. And coming in as well, David Vaughn replacing Duncan. And Billy Smith will shoot it the first opportunity he gets. He loves offense. We have had eight lead changes and a bunch of ties here in the first half. Madlock breaks the tie. There's the halftime score in the Southeast Regional in Lexington. One of these teams will advance to Sunday's regional final here in the Midwest in Kansas City. James Forrest. Good recovery, but off the hands of Geiger. And here's a three-on-two break. Hardaway loves to pass, doesn't he? And Billy Smith gives Memphis State a four-point lead. Coach Crimmins is saying, now take your time this time. Let's set up, punch the ball inside, or feed it out to Barry on the spot and up outside. There it is, the punch inside. To Geiger. Nice play by Geiger. Remember, playing with two fouls. Got to protect Geiger, so to go into a 2-3 zone. Keep Geiger at home underneath. 
Douglas will get in front of him. Douglas will score down deep. He's four for four from the field. Keep in mind, Memphis State is playing their pace, and Hardaway is only one for seven from the field, and yet they're in front here by two. Good sign for the white-shirted Tigers. Hardaway to Vaughn. It's going up. Tiger defended him, even though he's playing with two fouls. Barry has Matlock in front of him. Great play by John Barry around the defender. Wow, did Barry blow by that feller at half court. It was, whew. Tony Matlock is looking back to see where he went. And another tie at 34. Broken again by Anthony Douglas, who has 10 points now. And he's five for five tonight. Happy birthday. He's not supposed to be able to hit from more than five feet out. See, what does that show you? Shows you that every day is Christmas for some people. Nearly two minutes remaining in the first half. Mad luck, you can't cover a man to man. If you open up, he's going to blow by you. He wants to go left. Best. And go to Geiger. They have him totally smothered. Now they get the ball to him. Hardaway had it, lost it. It should be Memphis State's ball. Here he goes, driving in. Keeps his eye up there all the time. Sight unseen recruit? I don't believe it. We respected what Phil was doing, but we weren't going to let him know that. Look, if you want to work out, lift weights. Like a normal person, huh? Ride a bicycle. Or swim. Yeah, go bowling or do something. Something safe. Just be there, all right? Only one beer has the taste as genuine as the people who drink it. Budweiser. That was cool. Yes, that was great. That was crazy. <laughs> there are two kinds of cars. The cars you love to drive and the cars you need to drive. The cars that really handle and the cars that handle the groceries. The cars you don't want to stop driving and the cars that make the stops you need. With standard anti-lock brakes and a 200 horsepower V6, Chevy Lumina Euro 3.4 is two kinds of car for one kind of driver. You. The cars more people depend on. And now it's easy to win with the heartbeat. and steak in front of strangers at 30,000 feet? <laughs> Not with my old adhesive. Fix-It-End holds stronger than any other adhesive. It even stands up to the hottest liquids. Now I have fix it and forget it. Welcome back to Kansas City. Memphis State leads by a basket with a minute 55 left. I'm joined by Don Haskins, the head coach of UTEP. They'll play Cincinnati in the second half of the doubleheader. What kind of a game are you going to expect from Cincinnati? I have no idea. I tell you, I'm, I'm sitting here looking at a Memphis State bunch that they beat three times. So that's kind of it's hard for me to believe that they beat the ball club. I'm watching out here, but uh, they probably won't let us slow it down. We we haven't played slowed down all year. Uh, you know what happened the other day? That doesn't mean that, that we play that way all the time. We've averaged a little over 70 points a game and we plan on uh, shooting good shots when we get them. Okay, Coach Haskins, we appreciate it. A lot of sentiment for you around the country. Let's go back to Dick Stockton. I'll tell you one thing, Dick. You will see defense, and you'll see a game from the 60s. It'll be an outstanding game, so stay with us for that second game. Two misses inside, and Brian Hill fights for the rebound. Georgia Tech had enough chances, and it's kicked away by Billy Smith, so Tech will get another shot at it. Trailing by two, looking to tie the game with just about a minute remaining. And Malcolm Mackey ties the game. You know, Don Haskins really makes you feel sorry for him, don't you? Listening to that interview? Well, <laughs> but they, we don't, they can do we? play. They, yes, they don't they. gamble on defense. <laughs> Connecticut, uh, Cincinnati will gamble on defense where the El Paso plays belly button to belly button. Great chess game. Huh? Yeah, no, it's going to be a great chess game, and the first six minutes is the key to that game. 
27 seconds, so a differential of about 12 between the shot clock and the game clock. We're tied at 36. Madlock and Billy Smith in the backcourt. Hardaway, Vaughn, and Douglas up front for Memphis State. But, but Georgia Tech in the zone should start sooner looking for the shot because it takes longer to get a shot against the zone than it does against man to man. Tipped away and stolen by Travis Best. He's got Barry on the wing. And they're going to call the foul on Memphis State and a technical foul as well against Anthony Hardaway for knocking the ball away. So Barry on the floor again, and this is a technical. He might be hurt here. He went down real heavy this time. There's a close call. It was a step in. He went down solid that time. Let's hope he's not hurt. Barry gets up. He's holding his chest. Hardaway going to the bench for a breather. That's his first foul, and Georgia Tech will get two free throws and possession. Here's another angle from above. Got a half a step on him. Put, put the ball up. So if he made the basket, the shot would be good. Here's Pam. Pam Connolly. John's mom, and also in the arena is Rick Barry, his dad. Remember, on this floor, here at Kemper Arena four years ago, Scooter Barry was a member of the Kansas Jayhawks who won the national championship, and now John Barry is trying to get to the final four on this very court in the Midwest region. He gets four shots now. He's taking the, he's taking the drive, and he was shooting. He gets two for that and two for the technical or for the intentional foul of kicking the ball away. And he gets four and the ball. Now, so this could be a six or seven point play. He's got 17 points already, and that matches his season's average. There's plenty of time left. There's 13 seconds left, and you got Georgia Tech with a four point lead off those foul shots. Georgia Tech working right now. They've scored four points in this situation. Final seconds. The baseline, oh. a six-point play ends the first half. Oh, what a big finish for Georgia Tech and John Barry here. Ah, uh, my father, Rick Barry. He used to go out and anytime he wanted 40 points, he would do just like that. 19 points for Barry, and that is the end of the first half with the score. Georgia Tech 42, Memphis State 36. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA basketball championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship Regional Semifinal Game is sponsored by AT. First possession. Here's John Barry off the court. So he scored all six points. So it's a six-point lead for Georgia Tech after the score was tied and Memphis State had the ball with 17 seconds left. How did he respond here early second half? They go inside to Douglas. He's perfect tonight, still at six for six. That was a big basket. They needed that to stop the rush from Georgia Tech. Forrest has it blocked out of bounds, particularly, Al, since Hardaway is only one for seven from the field. So where would they be without Douglas's great shooting? Uh, Hardaway will start pumping it up, and Vaughn is uh, Vaughn has hit a few, but you got to remember the offensive weapon has been Barry with 19 points in the first half. That's more than a season's average already. Great position low inside, and Malcolm Mackey is pushed by Anthony Douglas. Right now, let's send you over to Jim Gray. Jim? Well, Dick, during the halftime, Larry Finch and his coaching crew from Memphis State really just wanted to calm the Tigers down. They didn't want things to get out of hand here in the second half, so he spent the entire halftime just telling his troops, hey, we're still in this game. It would be a tie game had it not been for that team. Dick? All right, Jim. But it is a Memphis State pace that Georgia Tech is winning at. Barry. And he hits a three again. That is his second three-point basket. And he's got 22 points, almost single-handedly, offensively, giving Georgia Tech its biggest lead of the game. Dick, not single-handedly, because Travis Best penetrated and dished out to him. Coming back is Billy Smith. Did I say almost single-handedly? You did say almost single-handedly. That covers a multitude of sins when you say that <laughs> word. Traveling call against Matt Geiger, but you're right. Yeah, that guy should not be handling the ball in backcourt. You're too big. You're seven foot. Playing hard is a transfer from Auburn. And he says, I don't want to go inside and maybe commit an offensive foul. Be my third. <laughs> no, not down no, low. Right. That's why they're in zone to protect them down low now. Two-three zone. 
Five-point lead for Georgia Tech. There's a sixth time on the floor for Barry. He loves the hardwood here at Kemper. <laughs> this should be two. Knocked away from Vaughn. Great defensive play. I think Malcolm Mackey got his hands on that. Barry's a hot hand. No look pass to James Forrest. And Barry nearly got another one. But Georgia Tech will go to the line, and they're pounding Memphis State inside as Hardaway picks up his second personal foul. Malcolm had inside position. That was a foolish foul by Hardaway. Should let him have the deuce. Malcolm Mackey will shoot two shots. He's among the top rebounders in Georgia Tech history, and that's a mouthful when you consider John Sally and Tom Hammonds. He already has compiled more boards than those two great players. He's been a three straight NCAA. The reason I said about the foul on Penny Hardaway was that if he gets in foul trouble, it's not the same Memphis State team. They need his versatility. Trailing by six points now, 46 to 40. Ohio State and North Carolina going back and forth at Lexington in that other semifinal in the Southeast region. Looks like they might be playing a little combination on Smith, not let him shoot from the outside. Smith has scored eight points. Mackey has done a superb job on Hardaway when they're in the man-to-man -man and covering on the zone. Turn around by Douglas misses. That's his first miss. He was six for six. Georgia Tech can open its biggest lead of the game if they get a basket here. John Barry with a runner. And it's going to drop. 24 points for John Barry. He had 32 against Florida State his season time. He gets his balance in the air by spreading his legs, and he went down for the seventh time. I said he hit the floor ten times. Trying to beat the zone, Hardaway, with only one basket so far. And let's see if Geiger has picked up a foul. If it is Geiger, it'll be his third, and Matt Geiger now with three, and Bobby Kremens has a decision to make. Probably put in up, Bill. Ivano Newbill will replace Geiger. Geiger goes out having scored two points, and he's got three personal. Lose a little offensive uh, scoring here. New Bill doesn't have the touch inside. Only baskets he gets is off offensive rebounds. Ernest Smith, the defensive specialist guard, is in the game for Memphis State. Hardaway misses the first free throw. The only thing he really doesn't do all that well is shoot free throws. Every other part of the game is as good as you'd want. They missed both, and Georgia Tech leading by eight, trying to stretch it here in the second half. Forrest blocked by Hardaway, and it's saved in by Douglas, only to see Georgia Tech and Forrest get the basket. Must score this time down. Nine rebounds for James Forrest, the hero of the second round win against USC. A little more patience against this zone. 10-point lead, Tech. One seven out of nine, and Hardaway gets free inside to smash the zone. High post position by Vaughn. Beat the low post where Hardaway was. New Bills a banger. Setting screens. Forrest two. Not good spacing that time for Georgia Tech. Al. Far shoot up the shot. Mackey was going for the rebound. Now the game has turned into a Georgia Tech pace affair as Matlock hits the jumper. A two-point shot, and it's a six-point game. They were end-to-end -end in the first half, and now they've slowed down the half court. Slow down. One of the good things that Memphis State's doing, they're analyzing their zone. And Matlock has to start scoring. He's the senior. He's the point guard.
offensive threat. And hitting the jumper is Malcolm Mackey. Nine points for Mackey. It's nice when someone knows they're not an offensive threat. That's what makes the new build good. Georgia Tech, though, at the backcourt. Best in Barry. Been the difference against Memphis State. They can pull off East Smith on the other side. Vaughn. Newbill did a good job against him. Vaughn gets another shot at it and makes good. Winner of this game will move to the regional finals on Sunday against the survivor of UTEP and Cincinnati. Time out. Here in Kansas City, Dick Stockton along with Al McGuire, Georgia Tech with a 12-2 run at the end of the first half, had a six-point lead. They upped it to 10, and now it's back to six with a little less than five minutes gone by in the second half. Brian Hill has come in the game in the backcourt for Georgia Tech. They got their best defensive man on Barry. That's E. Smith. He was coming out on Barry now. He's tough on D. He's squatting down there. Barry has scored 24 points, and Best throws the ball away. Tigers won an up-tempo game, and they had it that way in the first half, even though Georgia Tech had the lead. Hardaway has not shot well, and maybe he'll get on track with a three, his second of the game, and 11 points overall. Might have to go to a combination. The box one to stop Hardaway. Best comes back and misses a three. And here comes Memphis State down by three points. Here's the magic man. Watch his passing. He'll thread the needle inside. Very unselfish. Here he is, Hardaway. Ernest Smith missed the three, but inside is Douglas. Out of bounds. Georgia Tech ball, last touched by David Vaughn. I'm surprised uh, Memphis State's not putting pressure up court against Georgia Tech. Maybe they'll attack at half court. Just token with Madlock, trying to force Best into the sideline. So he's trying to force him over to the side. They did that in the first half, and it was effective for him, Al. That's right. They go in low to Mackey. Uh-oh. Smith lost his man. Barry could score here. Hill lost control. And here's a three-on-two opportunity for Memphis State. Anthony Hardaway. And he'll go to the line to try to bring Memphis State to within one point. The Georgia Tech foul is on Travis Best, his first personal. This is a well-played game. And uh, with the depth of Memphis State and the height of Georgia Tech, and the tempo always looming as a key to this game. Well, in tournament games in the second half, you don't see as many uh, substitutions. You want to play with your aces. You get down to about six, seven men, and that's it. You don't start touching that ninth, tenth man in the second half. He makes this one. They came back a long way, Dick. Down by one now, 52 to 51. So for Georgia Tech, and we'll see pressure now for Memphis State. Beston Barry with Forrest, Newbill, and Mackey. 52 to 51, Georgia Tech had a 10-point lead early in the second half. It's been cut to one by Memphis State. Trying to free Barry. He has the hot hand. There he is kissing the glass, and it's good. And he got to go high off the glass. Then John Barry with 26 points in the game. And get the ball back in Hardaway's hands down this end. Pace is slowed up. It was fast-paced. Tempo Memphis State style in the first half. Now half court, which Georgia Tech likes. Georgia Tech gave him a new face here, man to man. They've been alternating zone, man to man. Foul before the shot, no basket by Hardaway. <laughs> you want to see quickness. <laughs> that is quickness for a six foot five guy. And don't forget, he didn't play last year. He sat out Proposition 48. And he had an academic problem his senior year in high school and played very little then. And then, of course, he was in a robbery, was shot and played, uh, had to have surgery with a bullet in his foot. So well, he was being robbed. <laughs> yes. No, no, he wasn't on the front end of it. Oh. Basket by Hardaway. I'm glad we clarified that, Al. 
And it's all tied. 54 as Hardaway now with three three-point baskets. Barry for three. Long rebound, and it's Barry getting it. On the baseline, James Forrest, the freshman. Good assist by Barry and a nice left-hand layup by James Forrest, the miracle man, the holy mackerel man. <laughs> you said holy mackerel. He was the miracle man against USC. Here's another face again. Here's that zone. Now they need patience. Nylock, Vaughn, Hardaway, Ernest Smith, and Anthony Douglas. Madlock can bury from out there if you give him room. They go in for Anthony Douglas. He missed the shot. Memphis State gets it back. Good rebound by Ernest Smith. Here's Hardaway. Vaughn's all over the boards. Great, great play. It wouldn't drop. And finally, Georgia Tech's James Forrest cradles the ball. Barry gets it low into Malcolm Mackey and a foul. And that'll be the third team foul against Memphis State. And Tech also has a trio. Nice bounce pass into Malcolm Mackey that time. Malcolm tried to do too much with it. He just should have given a Mambo fake, go up and dunk it. These are two hungry teams, and we're going to see two more in the nightcap when Cincinnati battles UTEP because the top three seeds have been eliminated, and one of these clubs is going to go on to Minneapolis. Kansas is out. Arkansas is out. And Southern Cal. Southern Cal was two. Kansas was three in the seeding. But you know what? In this region, why we're having such great games now is that, hey, there's no playing not to lose. These guys got the pedal to the metal. And they're going from zero to 60 in five seconds. <laughs> David Vaughn committed his second foul. Georgia Tech by four points with 11-13 remaining in the second half. Timeout. A record for floor burns in a regional game, Al. Right now, Barry is seven. Well, I predicted he'd have 10. I would say 12 would be more than a record. <laughs> Notice the fast break points where Georgia Tech has outscored Memphis State. That's a surprising 10-point edge right there. That's the biggest surprise of all the statistics so far. 58-54, Georgia Tech. But Memphis State coming back in a bad pass by Ernest Smith. Here's James Forrest. And the lead is six now for Tech. Got to protect the ball more. Got to get your heads in the game. That's what Larry Finch said at halftime. Keep their heads in the game. Hardaway may be a guy to go to. He has awakened offensively with 10 points here in the second half. After one for seven in the first half. And Geiger has been called for his fourth personal foul. Bobby Crimmins took a chance playing him with three and the lead of six. And now Geiger has four. And he'll be replaced by Ivano Newbill. His right arm down low. He pushed the hip of Douglas down low inside the zone. Foolish foul, just not thinking. You get another shot in about six minutes, son. Geiger with only two points in the game and getting encouragement from Bobby Kremens, which is what you got to do there, right, coach? You don't want to lose the ball player. That's why you're a coach. Nice and patient now, Tiger. It's the zone. Madlock getting the top of the key. But the best passer has the ball right now, Penny Hardaway. Inside to Anthony Douglas. Missed the turnaround. Vaughn try to keep it alive from behind. But it's Tech ball and a six-point lead. Ten minutes to go in the second half. Can't stop working the clock, Rambling Wreck. Too soon to work the clock. Got to keep your game going. Barry has 26, one of three in double figures for Georgia Tech. Tip by Hardaway. Georgia Tech will keep the ball. They have scored six points in a row here. Clock down to 23, shot clock. Travis Biss, the playmaker, just a freshman along with Forrest. He's got it now. Two freshmen in the lineup. Now they've performed in this tournament. And Barry will try another three. It's missed. They've got Hardaway and Ernest Smith on the wings. And great release for Memphis State. And it's Ernest Smith with the basket. 
Outstanding release and a touch pass by Hardaway to Smith to finalize. Ivano Nubil set a pick, and hitting the three was Travis Best, his first of the game. Nubil set a real gigantuan pick that time, which freed um, Travis Best for the three of Trey, whatever you want to call it. Trey sounds good. It was big. <laughs> it was big for sure. 63 to 56, Georgia Tech on another turnover. James Forrest got it, but he traveled and turns it over back to Memphis State. I think this is a miss here now. Watch Penny release the ball. Right on the money. And there's the touch pass. Ram. 8.41 remaining in the second half. Larry Finch wants to get to the final four as a coach. Again, or for the first time, was there as a player. So at 28, 29 points. That's from Big Red, one of our running mates on CBS. 21 for 22 from the field. 44 in the game. That was at St. Louis to check it home. You got it. Hardaway misses a three and the rebound by Barry, and he gets hit in the face by Anthony Douglas. That'll be his third foul. Breon Douglas, the first Memphis State player to pick up three. He's tenacious and stays in the game. Newbill will inbound. Kelvin Allen from Bolivar, Tennessee. Good shot blocker is checked into the game and going out is Anthony Douglas with his three. One of the big things this year, Dick, with um, John Barry, has better shot selection than he did last year. Newbill, after Hardaway tried to overplay, they get it in low to Mackey. Mackey with the offensive rebound, and it's lost out of bounds. And Memphis State has a chance to come back here. The Tigers from the great Midwest Conference. Who expected two teams, Cincinnati and Memphis State, to be in the Sweet 16 from that conference? Well, they had three teams in the NCAA. The other was DePaul. Mike Slive is the commissioner. There's six teams in that conference. They don't get an automatic bid. Because any conference that's formed now by NCAA rules, it takes five years to get an automatic bid. I think someday you might see Louisville and Notre Dame in that conference for basketball. And they'll challenge the Big Ten if they form it that way. You're right. Another errand pass. And on the turnover, Georgia Tech takes over, but first we're going to take a break. 7.38 on the clock. The Women's Final Four, next weekend on CBS. It's not easy to pull yourself away. <laughs> <laughs> the what are we doing here? 7.38 remaining in the second half, Georgia Tech has a seven-point lead and the ball. Team fouls each have four. They might have to burn a timeout here. It's going to be close to 10 seconds, bringing it up. He got it over. Each team has three timeouts left. Barry got in trouble. The ball taken away and a good steal by David Vaughn. That's what Hardaway brings to him. Traps is six foot five. You can't see over the trap. That's what happened to John Barry that time. Big turnover for the Tigers. Big offensive weapon in the second half for Memphis State has been Hardaway. And here's a three-point shot that's missed by Billy Smith. Georgia Tech coming back. Travis Best winds up on the ground. The rebound, David Vaughn. Risky going for the three there because Memphis State has enough time to work the twos. Plenty of time left in the game, but young people don't seem to realize that. Billy Smith couldn't fight the temptation of the outside shot. He might hit his next one. There's a temptation again, Billy. Back here, back to Billy. Move in a little bit, Billy. I'll take that shot. And they're letting him take it. They're playing him soft outside. I don't think they can play Billy Smith soft. Knocked away by Forrest, and it's still Memphis State's ball with 13 seconds on the shot clock. Billy, don't, leave, don't lose your confidence now, Mr. Smith. Marcus Nolan, the freshman point guard, has replaced Madlock. Memphis State has scored only two points in the last six minutes of this game. Nolan's put in for defensive reasons, more than offense. He distributes the ball. And Best with a reach-in foul. 
That'll be the fourth team foul against Georgia Tech, two against Travis. And there's only 14 fouls against uh, Memphis State. No one's called a timeout yet, so they both got three timeouts remaining. In rechecking the team fouls, five now against Georgia Tech, Al. So they have one foul to give before they get into the one and one. Seven-point lead, and it's been stuck on seven for a couple of minutes now. Georgia Tech staying at home. Calvin tight. Allen. And a timeout called by timeout Memphis, Memphis State. State. That'll leave them with two timeouts remaining. Good call by Larry. Team wasn't active. Beginning in our game, and that fan is watching the North Carolina-Ohio State game, and right now the Buckeyes lead by five with less than 30 seconds to play. Give Dean Smith 28 and change in seconds, and you still got a long way to go to win. That's right. Seven-point lead for Georgia Tech. Memphis State just burned a timeout. They've got two remaining. There's Hardaway going for three, and he's got it. That'll cut it down a bit, and for Hardaway, his fourth three-point basket. Here's the trap. Got to move up on Hardaway no matter where he is. 19 for Anthony Hardaway. It's a four-point lead for Georgia Tech. Ramblin' Rec has the ball, and James Forrest just buries a jump shot to give the Tech 65-59 lead with 5-10 to play. Barry with 26, the high point man. Forrest with 12, Mackey with 11, but Hardaway's been hot in the second half, Al McGuire. Yes, right from about there. That's where Billy Smith hit. He's one of their best offensive shooters. They gotta put a man on him, preferably inside a combination. Someone has to flash the middle here. Good flash by Barry. Three-point lead for Georgia Tech. Barry in the lane now. 28 points. That's right. 28 points, fans. Unbelievable performance. Came in averaging 17. Driving the baseline and missing is Smith, but Kelvin Allen. Big body on the other side. And Nolan, the freshman, misses a three. Hardaway to Allen. And it was Penny Hardaway who got the timely rebound and a Players shaken up. Is that Barry? It is John Barry who has tasted the floor here at Kemper Arena many times tonight, Al. Every game he leaves part of himself on the floor. If you watch the lower part of the screen here, he's going to catch an elbow in the face. Now watch it. Watch a second. He's right in the bottom and right chair. See it? And it was, and it was by his own teammate. McKay is the one that caught him in the face. There it is. See McKay catch him from yeah, another angle? Malcolm Mackey, that is. Excellent right. camera work yeah. by, by the guys. He was hit in the face earlier, was hit on the chest. There's his mother, Pam, and all she cares about is how he's doing. That he gets up and he's well. Jim Gray. Well, Dick, he got smacked right in the nose and now it's bleeding rather profusely and Crandall Woodson the trainer from Georgia Tech is out there attending to him took a hard shot didn't get up for about 10 or 15 seconds they now kind of have him seated up and he'll get up but he took quite a shot in the nose we're watching Rick and Rick is telling the people around and what happened mom and dad here Barry's gonna have to come out here's another replay from yet another angle there it is right there see him get hit then get hit the second time Man, Malcolm Mackey hit him. Now, here's his mother, Pam, worried about him. John Barry gets a hand, and Pam Connolly. Got to be concerned over there. Barry has six rebounds and four assists to go with his 28 points. Also on the bench for Barry is his brother, Drew. He's being redshirted this year, so... We have they really well represented it with the uh, rambling wreck. And they're all worried right now. I'm not sure. I, I, you know, you never should say anything about an injury, but I, it'd be hard to, for him to stay out. He's not that type of player. I don't, uh, even if his nose is broke, I just got an opinion that this guy will come back in. Brian Hill will come into the game to replace John Barry. There's our story. Memphis State has only two timeouts remaining. Georgia Tech has one foul to give. Memphis State has two, and the possession arrow favors the Yellow Jackets, who will inbound and against pressure defensively. 
Nice pressure. Got a flash to middle. Should be broken right here. Brian Hill has done a great job off the bench all season. Geiger is in the game, playing with four fouls. Good time to bring him back for Bobby Kremens. You have a lot of pressure now. I, I double team all over. They don't really have a true point guard. Outside, outside of Travis Best, the Hill is not a, a, a guard back there. They're playing with one guard and four strong guys in the baseline. Really, Best is the shooting guard and the point guard in essence. And the ball is taken away. Hardaway has it. John Barry is at the scorer's table. Oh, what a pass. going to come in, and Billy Smith is fouled going up. There's Barry, who has cotton in his right nostril. And apparently, he's going to be coming back. Watch this pass here by Hardaway. He'll catch Smith on the, on, the, on the weak side of the court. There's the foul. Go to the line for two. John Barry will come back. His nose is not broken, which is good news. Hill will go out, so Barry, with nine floor burns, will come in the game. What happens when you get hit in the nose, even if it isn't broken? How does that affect you, Al? It does affect your breathing, especially with Barry, because he, he wears a mouthpiece, so he took the mouthpiece out, so he'll breathe more through his, uh, through his mouth than through his nose. He's Billy a Smith shooting. He is the first Memphis State Tiger, other than Ant Anthony Hardaway, to go to the free throw line tonight. Well, he's unpredictable. He's a great athlete, and he's a zone buster. We got ourselves a game. Stay with us. As we've had throughout the Midwest region, here's the pressure with Tech lead down to one. Morris <laughs> gets it across. Very sloppy. Field Very by sloppy. Nolan. And Memphis State can move in front with a basket. And here's a three-point shot. Short, taken by the freshman Nolan, and Barry forces it up, and they're going to call the in. blocking foul against Marcus Nolan. No doubt about it. He definitely stepped in. That'll be the 15th foul against the Memphis State Tigers. Watch how quick Nolan is, but he stepped into the left there. There goes another shot to his, uh, to his head that time, to his face. He's going to need a cut man. Uh... <laughs> He'll need a corner man, a cut man. You're about to see how Goodyear is changing all season driving right before your eyes. Introducing AquaTread, only from Goodyear. AquaTread's advanced design channels water out of your way for dependable all season traction, especially in the rain when you may need it most. AquaTread, the newest reason why we say the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. Mister, I'm taking you in. Marshal, isn't the fella entitled to a last meal? Folks everywhere are headed to McDonald's for the return of the Wild West. Because for a limited time, you can rustle up the two-fisted taste of a sassy McRib or breakfast up on ham, green peppers, and cheese and a tempting Western omelet McMuffin. Ma'am, that was mighty tasty. I'll need an order to go. What you yes, sir. want is what you get. At McDonald's today. <laughs> Don't you know it's not polite to talk with your mouth full? Wouldn't it be great if your blind date, Rachel, turned out to be Rachel Hunter, the international model? And you had a romantic dinner at the beach with beer, really great beer, like Keystone Light. And things went really well. So you had Rachel build you a beach house. Because it turned out that Rachel was a great little homemaker. Cold filter, Keystone, Keystone Light, and Keystone Drive. Bottle beer, taste in a can. So what's left to do? Been a shingle in the roof. I'll do that in the morning. <laughs> Who wouldn't that be great? Looks great. And Georgia Tech at one point had a 10-point lead in the second half, cut to one. John Barry got hit in the nose by teammate Malcolm Mackey. Had to come out. They plugged it up with gauze. It is not broken. And now the foul against Nolan. So Georgia Tech has the ball with a one-point lead. Team fouls. Tech has six. And Memphis State five. Barry the high scorer with 28 points for Georgia Tech. Having a great game tonight. Got the ball in the right man's hands here. He'll try to penetrate the dish off if he can. Malcolm Mackey gets inside, and goaltending will be called against David Vaughn. Let's bring you up to date on the flow of this game, which was all Memphis State in the first half, and then Georgia Tech had the lead at half. They have the possession arrow, two timeouts left. And now Memphis State coming back. What's key to them here to 
regain the lead. They've got to be very patient and see what defense Georgia Tech is in. They are now in, in the zone again. I would try to pick up the fifth foul on, on uh, Geiger. He's playing with four. I give the ball to Vaughn underneath. And Hardaway gets him outside. Let it fly, Hardaway. Here's Anthony Hardaway, number 25, who has 19 points. <laughs> Tries to draw the foul, and the offensive rebound by Vaughn. Loose ball. Tech has it. And Georgia Tech leading by three. And James Forrest gives him a five-point lead. Boy, did they get up court in a hurry after getting the ball back. Boy, that, that was close to a charge, but Forrest wanted no doubt about it. You're talking about an outstanding Time freshman. He is outstanding. James Forrest. The surprise of the game is that Georgia Tech has now 29 points on transition. This is a close call here, but he wanted to make sure of it, and that is a freshman, a boy in a man's body. <laughs> Forrest and Best. Here's Hardaway going for three. The rebound is by Tim Duncan, who's just entered the game. Hardaway with a high arcing three. That's the way he likes to shoot him. Ball comes down wet. He puts it so high. He's had five three-point baskets to bring Memphis State to within two. He doesn't tighten up. He doesn't know how to tighten up. He's super cool. He's chill. Memphis State has only one timeout left, and the next foul by Tech will put the Tigers in the one and one. Twenty on the shot clock. One nineteen in the game clock. Smith is playing Barry as tough as he can. Barry has scored twenty-eight and has hit the deck about ten times, but Beth throws it away. Uh, Travis, Best, turnover. Travis Best thought Barry was coming out. He changed direction to go back to the weak side of the court. It was just lack of eye communication. So here comes Memphis State, trailing by two. I take an early shot so I get possession twice. She could take a shot and miss, they'll still get another possession. Under a minute to play. And 30 seconds on the shot clock on the way. Miss Geiger the rebound and the foul called against Memphis State. I think it was against Allen. It is the sixth foul, and it'll be against Tim Duncan, the senior. Most of these players are from Memphis, homegrown. So each team with six fouls. One and one the next time, and on the turnover, Forrest walks. So we have seen two freshman errors. The last two times that Georgia Tech has had the ball, and they've turned it over 20 times tonight. He was hooking back. He started the hook back. He wanted to pass the ball too soon. There he drew. Definitely a walk. Two-point spread now. Anybody's ball game. David Vaughn is back in the game for Memphis State. We got a four-point, four-second spread. Nearly a turnover, but Madlock controlled. Here's Hardaway going strong to the basket. Ooh. And he's fouled and will go to the line to shoot two and a chance to tie the game. 17 foul against Georgia Tech. Penny adjusted in there that time. His original shot was going to be blocked, and he adjusted and got it off and got fouled on it. Duncan is in. Key part of this game occurred in the closing seconds of the first half on a six-point play, which concluded the half. All the points by John Barry. A two-shot foul and then a technical on Hardaway. He made the two and then hit a jumper at the buzzer. Six points, broke the tie, and gave Tech a six-point lead at the half. The score was tied with 13 seconds left to go for the half. Hardaway struggling from the line is five for nine, although he leads his team with 22 points. Georgia Tech has two timeouts left. That's very important to remember. Of course, when they, if they get trapped, which they will do, they can call timeout. Hardaway makes one out of two. He couldn't tie. It's a one-point game. There's the long pass to Geiger. He's fouled. It worked Georgia Tech's way. Oh, I would have dribbled that ball back out. That's how much I know about basketball. Here's a touchdown pass by Barry. He sees the man break down, Matt Greiger. I watch, he backs it up. There's the pass on the money. I would have went against the clock because I think the clock is more your opponent than Memphis State. Hardaway commits the foul, his third. 
And maybe Bobby Cremens would have liked him to push it out, but it all worked out for Tech. A lot of time left. 36 and change. That was only the second field goal for Matt Geiger tonight. But a timely one it is. And this now will try to give Tech a four-point lead. This is a big one because this means two possessions Memphis State needs if he makes it. Big, big. Now they'll settle back into the zone, probably call a timeout, set up their defenses. Georgia Tech will have one timeout time left, time. as will Memphis State when we return with 36-plus remaining. Arrow favors Georgia Tech, Al. Georgia Tech will give a new defensive fake. They got one timeout left, and if Memphis State scores, they'll call it. What Memphis State has to do is not look for the three-point. Going for the two, kick it down low to Vaughn or to Hardaway. Hardaway has it. He's gone for three. And the rebound is by Anthony Douglas. And Douglas cuts the lead in half to 74 to 72. And a timeout called by Memphis State, and they've used their last timeout. And they committed the ball sin Georgia Tech that time by not boxing out. It's not the shot that kills you, it's the rebound shot that kills you in that situation. Anybody's ball game, because if Georgia Tech has an Achilles heel, has an uh, albatross around their neck, because they don't have enough guards that can handle the ball. Here's the shot from the corner. Now Douglas gets inside position. I watch him just turn around and play it up there, dances around. Douglas has had an outstanding offensive game for him. Douglas has 14 points and shooting tonight. Hit his first six shots and is seven for 11, but he got the big basket there. Coach Crimmins now is telling his ball players, Larry here is first saying to the Tigers, he says, hey, we got a trap and we got a trap and go to town. Don't let too many uh, seconds go off the clock. If they break our trap, foul. Now on the other end, uh, Bobby Crimmins is saying to the guys, hey, if we have a trouble and we're trapped, call timeout. We got one timeout remaining. Let's try to get the ball into Travis Best's hands. Let's have Barry take the ball out of bounds. Barry is the high scorer with 28 points for Georgia Tech. Hardaway has 23 for Memphis State. 17 of them here in the second half. So Memphis State has no more timeouts. Georgia Tech has one timeout reminder. The one thing that Georgia Tech has to do, gang out there, they must flash a big man into the middle as a safety valve against this pressure that's going to be pressure at a maximum with 20.8 left on the clock. Geiger, the big man, will inbound. Remember, he's playing with four personal fouls. 20.8 seconds. I'd move a little bit further to the left, away from the backboard, so you can use the whole court and throw the ball in, Matt. No one's guarding him. They're doing this in reverse. What's going to happen? You see, you see here, Penny here. Here comes Penny Hardaway out a little bit. He's going to double team anyone who enters that area. And Hardaway is the man standing in the paint. You can go for a touchdown pass here if you bring your man in and then go long. It'd be dangerous for a long pass. I think Memphis State is watching John Barry for that very thing to the left of your picture. Well, they got Smith on him. Smith's their best defensive ball player. They get it in bounds to Barry. Two-point lead, and they foul Geiger. So Matt Geiger, who's a 71% free throw shooter, and one for one tonight, will go to the line. And if he makes two, keep in mind that Memphis State still has a chance for three. Don't even talk about two because he's shooting a one and one. You know, he has to make that first one. He doesn't get that second shot. If, 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 for the one of a nail. <laughs> Something about a horse, we lost the war or the battle. What war was that? Anyway, David Vaughn has come in for Memphis State. Georgia Tech tonight, 15 of 17 from the free throw line, so they have been excellent. Can't ice them, they got no timeouts left. He missed the front end, and it's in the hands of Hardaway. The lead is two. Billy Smith ties the game. Ten I, seconds to go. And we, have, and we have set the stage for a holy mackerel again. <laughs> you know, you gave four holy mackerels when Forrest hit the shot to beat Southern Cal. This may be a five. Who knows? Time out. Okay, now let's beat the 
stars in the other game in town, the Oldsmobile Drive to the Final Four Celebrity. Where the deals and values are spectacular on every new old. Example, the new Achieva with Smart Lease. Just $1.99 per month for 48 months, and no down payment gets you an Achieva. With anti-lock brakes, automatic transmission, and air. The game clock is running, so net a great deal now. If you're into looking good, get into Bud Light. The clean, fresh taste won't fill you up, never let you down. You can taste it, feel it, know you got to ride. Cause everything else, it's just a light. Just a light. Bud Light. Just a light. Just a light. Everything else, just a light. Dean Witter believed one thing that should distinguish his brokers is their ability to listen. Listen not only to what our clients say, but what they mean. I have a vision about retirement. I know Each client has a level of comfort. You know me, I'm a planner. There is no greater dividend a firm can earn than the confidence of its clients. You've helped me make some good decisions. There are many ways to measure success. We measure success one investor at a time. Why did Hertz invent number one club gold service? To beat the rush hour. See, every plane and everybody seems to land at once. But with goal service, there are no... no timeouts left for either side. Geiger will inbound in the tie game at 74. Mackey has it. Clock running down. Georgia Tech can't do anything with it. Don't make any difference. There's no T. It's overtime. Excellent, excellent defense by Larry Fritz that time. He kept the pressure up court, which was dangerous because if he fouled, it would have been a one-on-one -one down this end with no timeout left. Al, the way this game was going down the stretch, I'd have to say that Memphis State has to take a deep breath and be very pleased they're going overtime because they were headed for the L. Yeah, they, uh, they pretty much were going to their golf clubs and going for the uh, Miami and Easter vacation. But the last nine seconds, they kept tremendous pressure up court, which was dangerous. They wanted to get the ball either the best or the Barry, but they kept the ball in the big man's hands. I thought McKay made a good move here by not trying to gamble a miracle pass. Now, here's Travis Best just throwing the ball down court. It was all she wrote. The game goes into OT. Now, each team will pick up one timeout for overtime. You're allowed three timeouts. You're in the regular game. Now you get one extra for overtime. And since both teams were out of timeouts, each team will now have one in the five-minute session. Georgia Tech is one and one in overtime games this year, and Memphis State has a two and one record. The winner of this game will move on to the regional finals on Sunday and play the winner of the UTEP Cincinnati, which comes up next. And so far in the Midwest, we have had nothing but buzzer beaters and barn burners and you name it whether it be in Milwaukee or Dayton, but there's a story here in Kansas City. Well, they come to play. They have no fear. There's no favorites here. You can cover these four teams with a postage stamp. But there's just no <laughs> difference in them. Some people say Cincinnati might be a little better. I don't think so. I think these are four clubs that have great, great, great freshmen, great young players, and they're going to be heard from in the future. Geiger has four fouls as we go into the overtime. Leading scorers in the game for Memphis State, Hardaway, Hardaway with 23, and John Barry with 28. Back tap, good play by Memphis State. Madlock, number 20, and Billy Smith, 35 of the guards. Hardaway is 25. Douglas is 55, and David Vaughn, number 50, in there for Memphis State. Georgia Tech in the 2-3 zone, favoring Hardaway wherever he is in the man-to-man -man in that position, especially if he's on the wing. Hardaway has hit five three-point baskets today. To get a good pass into Douglas, but it's blocked by Geiger. Out of bounds, still Memphis State ball, and Geiger is not playing as if he has four. Yeah, Matt really went out at that time, but he, he got all leather, good block. Memphis was fortunate to get the ball back, 18 on the clock. 16 on the clock. Oh, Memphis State is patient in this first possession. And Hardaway goes up with a three. Gets his own rebound. Two clock. Go. 
the way he got to attack his own nice and easy. Nearly a turnover and nearly a foul by Geiger. They need Matt in here because of his size. He blocks up that whole middle down low. And the offensive end that allows Barry to roam and best to roam. Here is Douglas with two defenders on him and a rebound by Malcolm Mackey. So we've completed more than a minute and no score in two possessions by Memphis State. Anthony Douglas has had a great game, but I don't know if uh, Larry Finch wanted that particular shot. Best gets it in to Malcolm Mackey. It is tipped away by Billy Smith, so Georgia Tech still has 25 seconds to attempt a shot. Watch out there, they're doing such a great job at keeping the ball out of Best and Barry's hands. Best is number three. And a whistle and a foul away from the ball. It is against Memphis State and Billy Smith. Larry Finch complains about that call. Smith second. Now Billy's playing real tough uh, D on John Barry. It's one on one shot. Both teams are in the bonus that, but now Memphis State has 19 fouls, and the next one will mean automatic two shots. Barry hits the first free throw. He's seven for seven from the line tonight. He's all everything tonight. It's a shame one of these two teams have to lose this game. He's got five assists. Finally misses a free throw, but Matt Geiger gets a big rebound. Barry Nicing blocked out of bounds by Anthony Hardaway. Oh, that was a great block that time by Vaughn. He come across the paint and really caught a good piece of it. Billy Smith won't let Barry lose for the three. Here is James Forrest. Hits the jumper to give Georgia Tech the lead with nearly two minutes gone by in overtime. The first overtime. Quickly low bat of the wave. Vaughn had it, and they're going to call the foul against Georgia Tech. And Memphis State will go to the line one and one. For Travis Best, that's his third foul. Travis reached in that time. Imagine Travis a couple of years from now. He's getting better each game. Well, there's no more freshmen out there. These people have played 30, 31, 32 games already this season. He's a lot more relaxed. Since the games in Milwaukee, got his confidence back. But here is David Vaughn, a 78% free throw shooter. No, no, that's, no, not, that's not a two-shot foul, Rep. It was a one-and-one. One because one-and-one. Give him the ball, Travis. You get a technical on you. Give him the ball. Let the refs meet. This is what they should do. Good. This is what the referees should do. And I also feel they shouldn't be calling technicals. I lot of technical on Dean Smith last year, the one on John McLeod, and the one on University Calipari of Mass. Night, yeah. yeah, you should call the technical, but only after you have a conference like this. Then go back and call the technical. But don't have it a bang-bang like in baseball. That's right. When the umpire calls the play on the double play. Yes. The so-called phantom DP that you talk about? Yeah. Um, no, 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 Larry, he doesn't. It was no, not Larry, a two-shot foul. Larry, no, you're wrong on this, Larry. It was Best who slapped the ball away from David Vaughn. Let, let's give you the uh, the replay. Best reaches in and catches a piece of Vaughn. we got to go back a little bit further. No, this is where they, um, they're thinking it's a one-on-one. They think it's a two-shot foul. It was not a two-shot foul. It was a one-on-one. And not at the 10th foul yet, which is automatically two. Ernest Smith, who's the defensive specialist, has come in from Memphis State. Georgia Tech will have the ball. They're leading by three. Next foul by Memphis State. It'll be two shots on the line for Tech. Got to move without the ball offensively, defensively. You got to come up and double team any chance you get. Plenty of time yet, left yet. Ernest Smith on the steal. Barry try to pass it, and the big defensive ace gets the ball back for Memphis State. And that was not luck. E. Smith is just outstanding on defense. Memphis State so far is scoreless in this overtime session. All right, they're looking up now, trying to set up. Coach Fitch is, is coaching from the sidelines. He wants to get the ball to Hardaway, obviously. 
Running the clock down, Hardaway inside to Anthony Douglas. And the foul and the basket fouled out. Geiger is out of there. Matt Geiger has committed his fifth foul, and he is gone. And he also shook the backboard quite uh, quite well and might have bumped the ball out. See him against that backboard then? So you get Anthony Douglas going to the foul line now, for an adventure. Geiger had no choice there. Even though he was playing with four, he had to go challenge the shot. So Douglas is going to the line. He is a 70% free throw shooter. But he's made the big plays and the big games for Memphis State all year. First time at the line tonight. He's consistently aggressive. Yes. And it's a two-point game. He plays hard and he's physical. Has a very thick body. So he's bigger than six foot seven. He plays around six nine, six ten, because of the size of his body. And good arc on both free throws, and it's 77-76. And they're going to make Georgia Tech work to bring the ball up. Here's John Barry. He's got Ernest Smith defending him. Great defense on Travis Best without the ball. Now Madlock has to straighten up, square up. Don't move in on him. Yes, look at that defense. Look how he's down on Barry. Look how he's down there. Look at that. Barry gets free off a pick for a three-point shot and misses, but Madlock gets the rebound, and they're going to call the foul against James Forrest of Georgia Tech. Bobby Kremen's trying to get a step closer to the Final Four, which he reached two years ago. James reaches in here, right there. Watch it. You bump it right here. Watch. There it is. He had, well, he had his hand on his hip on the other side. It was, it was a feather touch, but it was still a foul. That is the 10th team foul against Georgia Tech. So Tony Madlock on the line for the first time tonight. We'll have two shots, and he's the best free throw shooter on the Tigers. The score is tied. Coming into this game, he's hit 27 of his last 29 free throws. Under pressure of tournament play at Memphis State has taken a lead by one point and i continue to put the pressure up court a la our second game today connecticut uh, cincinnati will do that you sense tech getting a little fatigued not fatigued they're just not in sync for the basket to help back <laughs> doesn't it always I let Barry do it, but Smith is playing him real tight without the ball. He comes around the horn. Ernest Smith stays with Barry, blankets him. Plenty of time left. Barry has to give it up, and he goes low to Malcolm Mackey. Oh, Mackey. Go tenant. No, no Hardaway blocks it. The rebound, Mackey misses. No goaltending call, and Memphis State has the ball. Under a minute to play and a one-point lead. I go man-to-man -man now. Good, 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 good call. Georgia Tech went man-to-man. -man. About a 13-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock, which you see. I would now settle back to his zone. I'd call him back into his zone. And Barry comes in and fouls Madlock. I don't think that's what Bobby Cremens was looking for, but Barry tried to gamble for the loose ball. Both teams still got one timeout left. You pick up an extra timeout during the T, uh, an overtime, an OT. So Tony Madlock, who hit critical free throws moments ago, has a chance to give Memphis State a three-point lead, but he's got to make the shots. We're in reverse. Two. We're in reverse now. Okay, if he makes this next one, Georgia Tech needs two possessions, which is difficult. The trick is to come down the first time and look for the two-point basket, not for the three-pointer. Then call your timeout that's remaining and put pressure up court. Big. 80 to 77, Memphis State. They've scored all six of its points in overtime at the free throw line. But the pressure on Georgia Tech now. Gotta go, gotta go all the way. Travis Best to Barry. Barry tries a three. Douglas the big rebound for Memphis State. 
And a foul called against Barry. And there is the Reverend David Vaughn, who got a chance to come to see his son play here. Actually, his grandson, he's 66, he looks young enough to be his father. He has 34 grandchildren. <laughs> he was sent here by a, from a personal check from the governor of Tennessee. Tony Madlock. He has hit five big free throws here in overtime. And Memphis State, nearly 17 seconds away from moving into the regional finals. And the lead is five. That's two possessions that Georgia Tech needs to make good on. Clock shot is off. Best gets two of them back, and Georgia Tech will use its one timeout right here in overtime with 8.3 seconds remaining. Don't leave us. Leads Georgia Tech 82 to 79. They have scored all eight of their points at the free throw line. The last six by Tony Madlock, their best free throw shooter. So now with Georgia Tech using up its last timeout, what do they have to do now? They have to foul immediately, preferably not Madlock. I'd overplay him, let, leave someone else open, foul him in, the, in about a second, second and a half. Hope he goes down and misses both foul shots. And then you come back for Hail Mary shot from three-point land and try to put it into a second overtime. Georgia Tech already had one Hail Mary, a holy macro by James Forrest, the three-pointer to beat USC. How many times can you go to the well? Well, uh, things bounce out, and uh, Memphis State has, has done a magnificent job coming back in the second half. Um, they got a tough break going into halftime when the score was tied with 13 seconds left and ended up going in six down because of a, a technical foul. Anthony Douglas will inbound from Memphis State. Ernest Smith, who's been terrific defensively with Hardaway, Madlock. I foul Hardaway if I could right now. But you can't make a decision. Hardaway would be the man at 66%, Al. I let him have the ball first and foul on Hill. Let him have the ball, Hill. And they're going to call the foul against Georgia Tech right. away from the ball. Hardaway was fouled by Travis Best. Best thing that could happen to him because nothing came off the clock. The clock still reads eight to change. Now Hardaway, I forget what that chart said, but I think he shoots in the low 60s. Here's on the top of the seat. There's a switch right there. And there's the foul that he called on, uh, on, on uh, Travis Best. Tim Duncan comes in for Memphis State. Hardaway is 6 for 10 from the free throw line tonight. Larry Finch talking with Stan Reynolds, one of the officials. Wonder what he's asking over there. Well, I just want to make sure everything's straight here. They made a substitution, and, the, and I don't know if the substitution... Yeah. Oh, they, I Duncan know what they can't think. come in. Duncan can't come in at that particular time. No, 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 no time went off the clock at all. Georgia Tech does not have a timeout remaining. Memphis State's taking all their ball plays and put them down, back down court. I don't like that. I would rather put a picket fence so you're used to shooting in to the picket fence. Oh, I'm right. Bring them back in, Larry. Make a picket fence there. The kid's been shooting for his 18, 19 years of age. Have him shoot into the picket fence. Remember the Syracuse-Indiana championship right, in New right. Orleans? Right. right. Oh, One and a hit. two. But he made a big one because it's still two possessions for Georgia Tech and they don't have any timeouts left. The only thing you can foul them from three-point land, touchdown land, which you shouldn't do. Travis Best pulls up for the three and misses. Congratulations to the Memphis Tigers. They're in the elite. Memphis State, 83, Georgia Tech, 79. disposed of by Memphis State and they will move on to the Midwest Regional Finals.
Larry Finch trying to get to the final four. He did as a player, and he's one step away. Hardaway with 24, led Memphis State, and John Barry had 29. Final score, Memphis State 83, Georgia Tech 79. So Memphis State will play the winner of the game upcoming between UTEP and fourth-seeded Cincinnati for the right to play Sunday to move on to the Final Four. And our Chevrolet players of the game, John Barry for Georgia Tech and Anthony Hardaway for Memphis State. For Al McGuire, Dick Stockton saying so long from Kemper Arena in Kansas City, Missouri. Memphis State moves on 83-79. to And right now, let's send you back to our New York studios and Pat O'Brien. Patrick? All right, Dick, uh, thank you very much. Let's get you up to date on the other game going on right now, Michigan and Oklahoma.